Welcome back to my channel. Do you want to install Kali Linux on your system and also keep using Windows alongside it? Well, you've come to the right place, because today I'm going to teach you how to install Kali Linux alongside Windows so you can use both operating systems via dual boot. So without wasting any more time, let's head into the video. Welcome to my channel, Technicio. To install Kali Linux, the first thing we need is its ISO image file. For that, I'll open my browser and search for Kali Linux. From the search results, I'll open the official Kali Linux website. From here, I'll choose the download option. It will ask me on which platform I want to install it. Like, on hardware, a virtual machine, ARM, mobile, cloud, containers, or as a live boot from USB, or maybe install it on WSL. Since I want to install it directly on the hardware, I'll choose the first option. Here you will get image files for 32-bit and 64-bit systems, as well as for Apple systems. I need the one for Windows 64-bit. Here you get the complete offline installer, along with three other options. If you scroll down, you'll also find Kali Purple. If you want the purple theme, you can download this offline installer. But I will download the old themed Kali Linux image. I have already downloaded this file. So now I will download Rufus. After the download is complete, I'll open Rufus. Now I'll connect my USB drive, and Rufus will automatically detect it. I will now select the Kali Linux image file. After selecting the ISO, I will choose the partition scheme as GPT. However, if your system does not support non-CSMUEFI, then you should choose MBR. Now I will start the process. Rufus will start making my USB drive bootable. Once the process is complete, I will close Rufus. Now I will restart my system. On the boot logo, I will press the system boot key, like F12 for most systems, and from the boot list, I will select the USB drive. Now the Kali Linux installer menu will appear in front of me, which gives me several options like graphical install, install, advanced options, accessible dark contrast installer menu, and the last one is install with speech synthesis. If I go into advanced options, I'll find mostly expert options there, so I'll go back and choose the graphical install option. The setup will load. The first option will be to choose the language. I will choose English. You can choose according to your preference. Then I'll choose the location, then keyboard configuration. After that, the setup will detect the installation media, load it, and start the installation. First, we will choose the network, whether we will connect via Ethernet or Wi-Fi. I will choose Wi-Fi and connect to a network. The setup will configure the network. Then it will ask us for the host name. If you are on a home network, you can put anything. But if you don't know, you can ask your network administrator. Actually, the setup usually automatically chooses one based on your IP, so I'll just click Continue. The domain name is also chosen automatically, so I'll just continue. Next, I'll write the name of the new user, then the username, and then the password for the account. After configuration, we'll set the clock and time zone. Now, after scanning partitions, the setup will ask us which partitioning method we want to use, guided or manual. In guided, we get four options. Use the partition with the most free space. Use the entire disk. Use the entire disk and set up LVM or set up encrypted LVM with the entire disk. I will choose the manual option here and select my 320 gigabyte hard drive because I want to dedicate the entire hard drive only to Kali Linux. It will give me a warning that I have selected the entire device, and if I continue, new partitions will be created and all my old data will be deleted. I will click Yes and continue. You can see that all the partitions on my disk have been deleted and only free space is left. But if you accidentally select a drive you didn't mean to, you can revert this step. No problem at all. So now I will select this free space and choose the automatically partition the free space option so that all partitions are created automatically. Then I will choose the all files in one partition option. But if you want to create separate partitions, you can do that. The setup will create the partitions. You can see that all partitions have been created. Now I will click finish. It will ask me one last time to confirm the changes I have made. This is the step after which you cannot undo, so confirm all your changes and then click Continue. Now the base system will install. This is the main installation, and this will take a little time. 
After the base system installation, we will get the software selection option, meaning which selective software I want to install. If I continue with the default selection, I might get an error saying installation step failed, and the setup will tell us which step failed. In my case, the select and install step failed. So I will choose this step again, and this time I will deselect all the options except XFCE, Kali's default desktop environment. Now the setup will complete successfully without any errors. The setup will now install the GRUB bootloader and finish up. With this, the installation will be complete. I will now click Continue to boot into Kali Linux, and I will also remove the USB so that it doesn't boot from the USB again. After restarting, we will get the Kali Linux boot menu, from where I can boot into either Kali or Windows. That means our system can now dual boot with both Kali Linux and Windows. So I will choose Kali. At startup, I will need to provide the username and password that I typed during installation. After entering the password, you can see the Kali Linux desktop appear in front of you, which means our installation is 100% perfectly complete, and you can now start your work on Kali Linux. This is how you can install Kali Linux alongside Windows on your system and use any operating system you want through dual boot, be it Windows or Kali Linux. In my next video, I'll tell you about new backup software and give you my honest reviews. So don't miss my next video and please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Technicio, and hit the bell icon so that you'll never miss an update from our channel. Together, let's end tech tantrums. Thank you.